Welcome back friends. In this video we will be talking about the pathogenesis of Staphylococcus aureus. It's very very important. We will be talking about pathogenesis. Pathogenesis of Staphylococcus uh, aureus. Not only aureus but Staphylococcus species. Now Staphylococcus species uh, is uh, having several different modes of pathogenesis. Actually remember when you have talked about the basic features of bacterial pathogenesis, we have seen several techniques, uh, several different stages. And what are those stages? Stages are entry to the host cell, then uh, and, and entry to the host body first, then second one is the entry to the host, attachment to the host cell, third one is the uh, propagation through the host cell, then fourth one is the intoxication and the killing the cell, and fifth one is releasing and then, then the immune modification. Now, in this case, we'll be majorly whenever uh, we are talking about pathogenesis, we'll be looking two important features. Two important features, and the first feature, whenever we're talking about the first feature, is to go against. So, the feature number one is to fight against, fight against immunity or host immune system. So, whenever we're talking about fight against immunity, we are talking about the immunity of Host, right? And the second procedure is to is to uh, or so it's a fight against immunity or manage to escape immunity or host immunity. And the second uh, process is to to produce or 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 is to is to destroy the host cell, right? Let's try the host cell. So these are the two different ways of pathogenesis in most of the bacteria that we will be studying. Now in this case, uh, in case of Staphylococcus species, the fight against immunity or this first mechanism or to escape the host in immunity, there are majorly two different mechanisms are there. Are two different mechanisms are available. Now the first uh, mechanism that we are going to talk about here is, sorry, no, don't take this color. Let's take a light color here. Let's take okay. Now the first mechanism is via the attachment or surface modifications or the surface molecules. Let me write the surface molecules. Now what are the surface molecules that we are talking about in case of Staphylococcus species? The surface molecules like protein A. So it's called protein A. It's a surface molecule of Staphylococcus species as well as we are talking about let's say here uh, fibronectin binding protein or FNBP or it is also called so let me write the full form fibronectin fibronectin binding protein okay now we know that fibronectin is an important component to hold the structures together, to hold the hold the nearby cells together. So it's an intracellular junction binding proteins. Now this fibronectin binding protein is also presented by this surface of st uh, Staphylococcus. If I draw the surface of Staphylococcus in this case, so let, let me draw it here. So if this is the Staphylococcus surface, now the surface of Staphylococcus is carrying two or three different two different things. One is the protein A. So let me draw the protein A here. So this is the region for the protein A. So this is the protein A which is a surface protein and also it is having fibronectin binding protein. So let me draw the fibronectin binding protein. This is the fibronectin. So these are the two different modifications. This is FNBP and this is the protein A. Okay, so these are the modifications that are present. Now, what is the importance of having or expressing these important proteins onto the surface? First of all, the protein A actually help this protein A actually helps this staphylococcus to escape uh, the immune system or to escape the engulfment uh, via the different immune system cells like macrophages right because if you recall your uh, understanding of immunology you know that uh, that the, there are cells like macrophages and also natural killer cells and all those phagocytic cells they can come and engulf uh, the foreign particles like this bacteria so in this case what they can do they are expressing this particular thing on their surface so if, if we are talking about this particular part that yes this is the staphylococcus and onto the surface of staphylococcus they are expressing this particular protein as a result of the expression of this particular protein A content uh, this protein A is having a tendency to bind with the FC portion of IgG. So if this is the IgG molecules, and so let's say let's draw the structure. So this is the IgG molecules. So let me write. This is IgG uh, antibody. Now this is the FC portion of IgG, right? So let me mark it. So it's a FC portion of IgG. 
right and this is the protein a particle so this one is the protein a right now what uh, this protein A is doing, the protein A is having the tendency or capability of binding with the FC portion of IgG. As a result of that, uh, what, what it is doing that it is escaping, it is escaping the endocytosis. So as a result of that, so no endocytosis, so let me write, no endocytosis is possible. No endocytosis is possible. Why? Because we actually know that in most of the cases, what is the basic thing? That if this is the bacteria, for the engulfment of this bacteria, it is need to be coated with antibody. So antibody will go and bind like this. So in this binding, what we can see that this FAB portion is to be attached. FAB means this is the section which is called FAB. In this case, this regions, right? Now, FAB is the portion which is need to be attached directly with this antigen because this FAB is the antigen binding site, right? So, if it is coating this an this antigen or foreign pathogen with this FAB portion, in those cases, the macrophage cells or the phagocytic cells can come and engulf it. So, let me draw the cell and in, uh, see the engulfment. So, now the macrophages will come and start to engulf this total. Uh, component so it's a say it's a macrophage it will start engulfing right but in those case in in this case of this protein a protein a is designed in such a way so that it will uh, bind with this antibody not via the fab portion but via the fc region so as a result of that there is no binding of macrophage so macrophage won't recognize this antibody bind or antibody coated bacteria due to the uh, opposite kind of binding now in those cases in these cases we, it should be the binding that FAB attached to this surface but in this case the FC is attached to the surface as a result macrophage won't get uh, this coated bacteria won't get the signal and it won't uh, it is unable uh, to engulf this kind of bacteria so this uh, process of escaping the macrophage and other phagocytic cells and there is no endocytosis Okay, so this is one, one kind. And the second kind is a fibronectin binding protein or FNBP, which is also associated with this part. So this is, say, this is the FNBP or fibronectin binding protein. As it is binding with the fibronectin binding protein, it can bind with the fibronectin layer. As a result of the binding of uh, itself with the fibronectin layer, it is a kind of stabilized at a particular place and it is not providing any further signal to the immune system cells so that they cannot uh, recognize this particular pathogen as foreign. So as it is attached to the fibronectin, it will recognize it as its own self. So it won't, uh, it won't. So the, our immune system is getting puzzled that uh, immune system is not getting the signal that this is a pathogen, right? So it is escaping uh, to provide the signal via this FNBP protein. Okay. So this is uh, these are the different mechanisms of uh, going against the inf immunity, right? Now the second thing is the destruction of the host cell. Now the destruction of the host cell is largely caused by exotoxins, right? It is caused by exotoxins. Now the exotoxins as well as by enzymes, several types of enzymes. So these are the two important mediators. Now the exotoxin that it talks about, uh, majorly uh, they are. Uh, two different types of toxins and uh, the toxin is one is the cellulitic toxin or cytolytic toxins which will directly rupture the cell directly rupture the host cell and second types of toxin is called uh, another kind of immune toxin so let me let me let me distinguish these two parts so it can further divide into two different one is the cytolytic cytolytic toxin another one is here is immune toxin immune toxin okay so the cytolytic toxin what cytolytic toxin can do cytolytic toxin actually uh, if this is the cell for example so sorry sorry so let's talk about the red blood cell for example most of the time the cytolytic toxin is associated with the red blood cell so they are hemorrhagic right so if if we are talking about this is a red blood cell so if this is a red blood cell now due to the activity of this toxin this red blood cell eventually getting ruptured and all these components will start to come out right so this is this process is as achieved due to the cytolytic toxin okay and the immune toxin can bring more and more immune cells and it will force our immune system to generate more and more chemical mediators like interleukins and cytokines as a result of that this will cause the toxic shock syndrome or tss remember we have talked about it before they can cause TSS. Now, the immune toxin mode of action is something like that. We know that uh, the T cell, 
or what you can say T lymphocyte cell need to be uh, activated and they are attached with a certain kind of uh, antigen presenting cells right so there is an interaction between T cell and the antigen presenting cell so for example if this is the host cell so let me draw if this is the host cell for example the host cell is having its own MHC molecule right so with the help of its own MHC molecule it is providing uh, the fragment of uh, the pathogen that enters into the cell and then T cell will come and T cell will be attached so this is the T cell with the help of its T cell receptor or TCR it will attach with uh, this MHC molecule right so this is the T cell and this is the host cell right now uh, this interaction is important because this will uh, provide some interleukins as interleukins as a signal to this T cell and it will it will uh, it will bring more more T cells into this place right so this is the basic process of action or immune action but in this case what this uh, what they can do is they are having this immunotoxins or we can also call it as a super antigen right we call it a super antigen so let me uh, provide super antigen now this super antigen is again a kind of exotoxin immune exotoxin provided by the staphylococcus species now this super antigen uh, for example let's say this this red thing is a super antigen in this case now they provide this super antigen there now as they are having this super antigen providing the super antigen now the super antigen can go and fit onto this place where uh, they are supposed to show the antigen so instead of this uh, normal antigen they are now filled with super antigen now if this super antigen replaces the normal antigen in this uh, MHC and TCR receptor region it will activates more and more T cells so this response of T cell is getting much more amplified in this region and not only that it will bring more cytokines cytokines in this place more more cytokines in this place as a result of this chemical mediators it will lead to certain kind of tissue damage certain kind of tissue damage will be associated with these things okay and it will cause some disease or some infection symptoms so these are the major ways of utilization of the toxins in this case now the second thing are the enzymes right now the enzymes uh, provided by the staphylococcus species are coagulase catalase so let me write some of the names coagulase coagulase they are catalase remember catalase can break down uh, peroxide into water and oxygen they can produce ma massive amount of oxygen from there coagulase can actually literally coagulate certain uh, bacterial cells one with another and can actually agglutinate there right and obviously they can provide hyaluronidase and fibrin fibrinolysine now this fibrinolysine and hyaluronidase so let me write fibrinolysine so fibrinolysine this means lysine means the lysis right so they are associated with the lysis of fibronectin so they can actually eventually degrade fibronectin they can degrade the hyaluronic acid barriers as a result of that they will uh, they will degrade or, or they will uh, what we can say degrade the tissue lining or make the tissue lining th thin so tissue lining tissue lining damage a tissue lining damaging is associated with all of these factors tissue lining damage is associated right so these are by by the cause of this kind of enzyme so when you are talking about enzymes so let me let me uh, clear these things for you these are the enzymes that are associated okay and if we are talking about the another important thing that can be caused uh, that can, that are secreted by this uh, staphylococcus species are slime production now why slime production is important now the production of slime so let me write it here this is a another kind uh, another kind so slime slime production okay because this slime that they produce this will help them to escape the phagocytosis so it's the same kind using like that so it will escape the phagocytosis actually for the staphylococcus epidermides or epidermitis uh, they are produ producing this slime okay so so these are the different modes of their infectivity and uh, the, their pathogenicity also and they can escape it via they escape the immune system via protein a and fibronectin binding protein and they can 
they can destroy the host cell via the cyto cytolytic toxins and also super antigen presentation which is a causative agent of toxic shock syndrome we have already seen that and they can produce slime and they can produce the enzymes like coagulase catalase fibrinolysin as well as the hyaluronidase okay so that's it and i hope that's helpful thank you